So the blessings that we have in Jesus today, though it might not seem to be a blessing. For example, blessed be the poor in spirit, yeah. or blessed those who mourn, or blessed those who are being persecuted. Yeah. When we are going through those things, it feels like a curse. It doesn't feel <laughs> like a blessing. It does feel like a curse, as you said. Hey everyone, hopefully you're doing well. Welcome to the Jesus King Podcast. I'm back with Emil. How are you doing, Emil? Well, thanks. How are you? Doing well. Today, we're actually speaking about blessings and curses. And often, sometimes people can get a bit superstitious with it. Mm -hmm. um, they might carry certain items that they believe is kind of like brings a blessing or a good like charm. Or yeah. they believe certain items bring a curse. Yeah. Right? And... You know, you see many movies, people with haunted houses or witchcraft items, and they mm -hmm. believe that once you touch something or... You're going to get a curse. Yeah, you get cursed and mm -hmm. something happens to you and your family. Yeah. But we want to see a bit of a biblical perspective on what a blessing and a curse is. Mm -hmm. And would these things maybe would apply to us today? Okay. So maybe we can start with that. What is a blessing? What is a curse? Mm -hmm. And how we we see it in the Old Testament and the New Testament? Yeah, uh, I think I think that's a good place to start off. Um, so the way I see it, blessings are things that are positive, things that um, come from God, things that edify us, things that bring good in our life and the people around us. Whereas curses is the complete opposite. Um, it's the lack of God, and because there is a lack of God bad things happen to us and curses um, are a result of it. So it's not that God is necessarily cursing us. It's just because God is not there, curses are permitted in our life and they have a place to take hold. Whereas if God is, the hedge of protection is around us because we are with Christ, then we are safe from curses and they have no place to hold on to. So they'll just be flooding over us. Okay, Yeah. cool. Something goes by. That's all. No, yeah. it's, it's, it's great. So it, it's important to recognize what a blessing is and what a curse is. Mm -hmm. And you were mentioning God in this. Of course. And often people try and establish a blessing or a curse upon a person mm -hmm. or a, upon an item. Mm -hmm. But we see biblically speaking, it's, it's God is in control. Of course. And when there is a person who is obedient and loves him, blessings will follow. Mm -hmm. And when a person who goes against God and sins against God, then he's putting himself or herself in a situation where they are open to bad things happening yeah. to them, right? And if you look at Deuteronomy, like halfway 27 uh, and chapter 28, mm -hmm. you see God speaking blessings and curses upon the people of Israel. And... It wasn't so much involving witchcraft, which a lot of people just put that into it, right? You'll be cursed if you... Generational curses, yeah. curses and stuff like that. Yeah. Right? It's more like if you read uh, Deuteronomy mm. 27 and 28, it's mm. about if you commit sexual immorality, you'll be cursed. If you s commit incest or bestiality, you'll be cursed. If you... Um, you know, if you worship idols, if you build an idol, you'll be cursed. You reap what you saw type thing. It, it is. So it's yeah. more like it's just sin in general mm -hmm. that is bringing a curse upon a person. So because you're taking something that is so evil and practicing something that is so evil, mm -hmm. then you're only, as you said, you're reaping what you're sowing. But the blessings in Deuteronomy... It was connected to the land that God has promised. And it was interesting because we spoke about God's promise. Yes. So it was connected to God's promise and blessings were flowing after that. Yes. So in the beginning of Deuteronomy 28, the blessings were God's going to bless your barns. God's going to bless your fields. God's going to bless the womb that mm -hmm. is inside the, the woman. Yeah. yeah. So it was, and God will bless your safety, right? Your military. 
whoever comes against you will be running away from you and so on yeah. so god was connecting those blessings into their lives but if they were disobedient <laughs> living in curses. sin there will come curses and not on one person the whole nation the whole nation yes. and those curses wasn't just about things around the person but those curses was all also to do with the person themselves like talking about diseases the talking land, about the animals the person yeah. everything so so it's yeah it was like it was so uh i would say so close it that curse or that blessing towards a person is so connected to them we still see nationwide curses and blessings when a nation is doing right by god you see that nation blessed when you see a nation that's rebelling against god and doing evil you see that there's curses that's still like you still see it to yeah, this day yeah god's still at work it's still at work however for those individual curses that were in deuteronomy the way i see it is we no longer still with that like um covenant we are, yeah, we're in a, we're new, on a covenant. new covenant yeah. with Christ and with Christ we get the blessings that come with him it's not about it's not a day to day thing like did i do well today or am i going to be cursed today i'm going to be blessed no 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 that all the curses as long as Christ is our lord we're put on that cross yeah finished as it says curse is the one who's on the tree Yes. So he took our sin, he took our curse. Absolutely. And now we get to live in the righteousness of Jesus. Absolutely. Free of curses and full of blessings. Absolutely. Yeah. And this is a promise from God. And we spoke about this in the previous episode for a promise to be you know established in our lives. We need two things, which is to be obedient and to have faith. And that's what I see as having Christ as our lord and savior we have to have faith that he is our lord and savior and we have to be obedient because we have that faith yeah without that faith you'll never be obedient and if you truly have faith you will be obedient it's a consequences of your faith yeah and therefore that promise and those blessings will be established in your life definitely there's no question about it it's it's not a matter of maybe no it's it will and those blessings are spiritual and, and we see in Ephesians 1:3 Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. Right? So it's every spiritual blessing there is. It's not a limited thing based on how we act. No, no, no. He's our Lord and Savior. We have every single blessing. That's yeah. amazing. That's oh. that's a crazy promise. Amen. Good. I mean to have all the blessings flow from Jesus makes us um start to put everything aside and yeah. solely focus on Jesus. Absolutely. Cuz as Christians sometimes we can cram a lot of other things with Jesus mm -hmm. and feel like the more I have of everything else the more i feel like my life will be more together and mm -hmm. there will be blessings in my life yeah but as we read in ephesians 1 is about jesus and the closer you come to jesus the more you get to experience these spiritual blessings that's right and the beautiful connection with deuteronomy chapter 27 and 28 mm -hmm. and for example matthew 5 in Deuteronomy, those blessings and curses were connected to the land, right? I will bless you within this land. Mm -hmm. If you sin, I will curse you within this land, and eventually I will take you out of the land. Yes. With Jesus in Matthew 5, he spoke about, for example, blessed are the poor, for theirs is the kingdom of God. The Beatitudes, yeah. Yeah. Blessed are those who are pure in heart. Blessed those who are mourn, mourning. Blessed yeah. those who are hungry for righteousness sake. Blessed those who are being persecuted for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Jesus was connecting those people in their struggles to the kingdom of God. Yeah. And the kingdom of God was not a kingdom of this earth. So our blessings are connected to the heavenly kingdom. And that's why it says heavenly, sorry, spiritual blessings. Yeah, that, that's the yeah. connection I was trying to make is that yeah. 
the promise in the old covenant was based on a land that was on earth mm -hmm. and it was something that you can be even taken off right because in those curses he said i will bring someone that you won't even know their language they will take the king that you've put upon yourself and you and they will take you somewhere else yeah so in those curses there was a potential of being taken out of the promised land yes which happened in the time of daniel it, right yeah, they right. were there um but in the new covenant mm -hmm. when we are receiving these heavenly uh, blessings and we are in the kingdom of god when we are there we are there for eternity exactly there is nothing that can take us away from god because we are going to enjoy the presence of the lord for eternity, for eternity. So the blessings that we have in Jesus today, though it might not seem to be a blessing. For example, blessed be the poor in spirit, yeah. or blessed those who mourn, or blessed those who are being persecuted. Yeah. When we are going through those things, it feels like a curse. It doesn't feel <laughs> like a blessing. It does feel like a curse, yeah. as you said. But the thing is, the blessing is spiritual. Yeah. It's not natural. That's right. In the Old Testament, it was natural. Yeah. Your crops right? will be blessed. Your yeah. womb will be blessed. You'll have your children. You'll have your yeah. family. You'll have your safety. In the New Testament... But after is... death, what do you have? Yeah. That, that's what it is. Death, that's all you can get. There's nothing. Yeah. In the New Testament, uh, you will be persecuted. So there might not be safety. Yeah. Um, you will be taken to jail or even be killed. Yeah. Or even your family be taken away from you. Yeah. All these things might seem to be like, it's the opposite. The land is literally, the earth itself hates us. Yeah. And, and, and the blessings is in Jesus. That's Absolutely. why Jesus is calling us, despite whatever happens in the world, follow me. Because he is the fountain of our blessings. Absolutely. And if you go to the other gospel, I believe it's in Mark 6, he mentions the Beatitudes but then he mentions few of the woes. Woe to you who are rich. Woe to you who are full. Woe to you who are laughing, right? Because you're going to mourn. It, it's, it's the idea that Jesus is saying, if you are in me and if you are spiritually humble, mm -hmm. that you are willing to come to me, I will bless you. But to those who are full of pride, and think they are satisfied without having Jesus in their life, then the riches, the laughter, and the satisfaction that they have in this life, it's not a blessing. Right. It's a curse in disguise. Yeah. So I think as Christians, we need to be more aware and open. Mm -hmm. It's not an object that's going to give me a blessing. It's not a building Water that's going to give me or a, a blessing. Or anything. Like holy yeah. oil, holy yeah. waters, whatever they're coming up with, candles, whatever they're coming up with. None of these can bless you in the way God intended to bless you. Yeah. God, God's blessing towards you is through Jesus. And the more you immerse yourself in Jesus, the more you will experience God's blessings in your life. They might not be what we want on earth. It might not be safety because he spoke about persecution. It might not be, um, yeah, whatever it is, it might not be wealth. It might not be having an amazing family and having multiple of children. It, you might be on your own. You your family might reject you. you. Yeah. They might be your enemies, yeah. but you still love them. But to have blessings in Jesus, I believe that's the fountain. Absolutely. And the more we draw near to Jesus, the more we can be satisfied in him Amen. and we can tell people about it. Yeah. Be I mean, when, when you were saying all this, because it, it reminded me of Galatians 6, 8, which is those who sow in the flesh will reap corruption and death. Like this, that's what you get from the flesh. But those who sow in this in the spirit, spirit yeah. will get everlasting life, which is... That's what we're yeah. supposed to be doing. That that's where our blessings come from. It's that everlasting life, that and those everlasting rewards and everlasting blessings. And of course, you do see those blessings in your life here on earth. 
but it's not in the form of yep. a shiny car or anything like that. Although for some people, God blesses them with those things to bless those other brothers and sisters in Christ that are suffering. And God can use certain people to bless those people. And God puts some people in positions where they can help others. I think, I think that's a really good point, what you brought. Because throughout the videos, we're talking about where do our blessings come from. And you mentioned something really nice mm -hmm. because we like when God blesses us. Mm -hmm. But we're also an instrument to be a blessing to, to others. others. Absolutely. So I think when God blesses us, mm -hmm. sometimes it's not only for ourselves, as yeah. you as you were saying. Sometimes it's just for us to take it and pass it on. What What was um was Joseph not blessed? Oh yeah, he was. And was he a blessing for not just for himself, but all of Egypt, yeah. all of Canaan, many yeah. other nations around? How many people did he save? He was a blessing to everyone. Yeah. So God God uses people as blessings. And even though sometimes you have to go through very hard things in life. <laughs> yeah. Very hard things. You literally he was a slave. But ultimately, if you follow God's will and you remain obedient and faithful to God, you will get that promise. You will get that reward. You will get that blessing. And we see that time and time again. Whenever someone goes against God, you see all those blessings, all those promises turn to curses. It's not God cursing them. It's just you have taken the light out of your life. What's left? It's only darkness. There's only darkness. It's yeah. just a, it's just a result of your actions. It's not that God put darkness in your life. No, it's just the light has left. That's all it is. And then you see, you see people these days. Oh, pray, pray for this generational curse to be broken. In Jesus' name and things like that, I'm like, what generational curse can take hold in your life if you have Jesus? What what can take hold in your life? How how can how can an undeserved curse take hold in your life? If it's undeserved, what did you do to deserve it? Yeah, uh, someone but, someone gave yeah. you the evil eye <laughs> six years ago to your to your family because they were jealous of you. So you have that little eye thing now. Look. Or if if you say certain words, you're manifesting bad things. Like, oh, shouldn't say it's going to rain on Sunday. It might rain. Do my, do my words have that power? Am I mm -hmm. God? Can I control the weather with my words and my and my thoughts? No, yeah. it's I I always I always laugh at those people that, that that say those things. Not like in an insulting way, but like it's silly. Like the yeah. way I see it, it's 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 like oh, for example, we were. My friends and I were at an active volcano. And I, as a joke, and I said, oh, imagine it just starts to erupt now. That would be scary. And they're like, don't say that. It might erupt. I'm like, what? Yeah. <laughs> My, I can say that all day. I'm like, yeah, it's 100% it's going to erupt today. See, nothing happened. I'm not God. I can't control the volcano. Yeah. What I say or don't say is not going to affect it. I put everything, all my faith in God. Yeah, I, I think that's very important. As Christians, we should not be tempted to get superstitious yeah. with these things. And we, we spoke about it earlier. It's about items, buildings, yeah. elements, water, oil, and stuff like that, that people put so much faith into these things. And they work. But do you know why they work? Is it because they themselves are blessed? Oh, it's just because you have faith in Christ. Yeah, <laughs> It's simple. Because I remember as a child, I, I was very young, and a demon tried to attack me in my in my sleep in my dreams and as a child i all i knew was i didn't know that many prayers my my dad and my mom used to pray for me every night all i knew was the cross and i did this and the demon fled in fear it wasn't because of this it was because yeah. of my faith it's not the two fingers no it's yeah. it's not this it's not the actual symbol the cross or it reminded him of what jesus did he already knows what jesus did it's simply my faith that my Lord is Jesus and he died for me. Yeah. And and like for example, I do wear a cross sometimes. That that's not gonna save me or anything. It's just it's just a symbol that shows that I'm proud to be a Christian. I have I'm proud that Jesus died for me on my cross. And I'm I'm showing this to the world. I don't care. It's not it's not like for me it's not something that is gonna make me or break me. But I do that. Or if my if I'm with my cousins and we go to a traditional church, for their sake I draw their cross. For their sake, uh, when I'm with them, I do that. It's not going to make me or break me. 
It's but it, to me, I don't see them as necessary, and I don't think you do either. Uh, in in regards to these elements, these things, yeah. oh, of course, yeah. of course not. Um, well, hopefully everybody's enjoyed this. Um, just want to encourage you. It's um, don't put too much faith in these little things as we yeah. spoke about. Focus on Jesus to be the fountain of your blessings in your life. Amen. And for the people that try and scare you into saying, "Oh, you're going to be cursed." or you've there's a curse that's passed on from your parents to yourself you need to realize that you are free in the spirit of god it says where the spirit of the lord is there is freedom and what do you think that freedom is it's not just freedom of sin it's freedom of curses mm -hmm. you are a new creation in christ the old is gone you have been created as new in Christ. Mm -hmm. So don't fall for these teachings where they try and discourage you or where they try and put fear or sometimes they might even try and sell you something. You're cursed? Guess what? There's this little picture or a little Bible or a little cross. Some incense. Or some incense. <clears throat> it's just a gimmick. They, they try to sell you something. The incense does smell and, nice though. <laughs> Uh, uh, I do in my house. It smells nice. I like, yeah. I like it. <laughs> it. It smells nice, and maybe the demons is. don't like it, so they <laughs> run away. It's it's just unbelievable. Be educated in the Word of God, and as we just shared a simple verse in Ephesians one three, you have all the blessings in Jesus. And notice this: if the Holy Spirit lives in you, like God Himself abides in you, how can I curse you? Are, you? Yeah, you are a temple of the Holy Spirit. Which curse could survive the, 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 the power of God, the presence of God, the fire of God? Nothing. Nothing will. Power. So I just encourage you to embrace being a new creation. Amen. This is who you are and understand your identity in Jesus. Jesus doesn't have children who are cursed. No. Uh, sorry, God doesn't have children who are cursed. Mm -hmm. uh, God has children who are blessed in his son, Jesus. Amen. And just enjoy that and believe in that. Because if you don't and start doubting in it, and you start to invite all these things into your life, well, you're just opening the door to the devil. Absolutely. But don't give these voices any reason yep. to abide in don't you. Don't give it a second yeah. thought. The only one you should fear is Jesus and yeah. the triune God. So God bless you. Absolutely. And your family and take care of yourself. We'll see you next time. Take, take care. care.